Hey, today I'm going to teach you how to speak English fluently like a native English speaker using the simple rule of threes. Now, are you ready to finally sound like a native English speaker and speak English fluently? Well, then this lesson is for you. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Now this simple rule, let me remind you what the rule is. My English teachers taught me this rule. The rule goes like this, provide enough support for your thoughts, ideas, or opinions by giving three details, three examples, or three reasons. This is how you speak English fluently and start sounding like a native English speaker. So let's look at the first example and see how we can use three details to speak English fluently about a topic. Now here's a video clip. The topic is your pet. Tell me about your pet. Now the response we have right here is I have a dog. Now this response is good, but it's not representing a fluent English response because it's very short. So we have to add again, three details. So what are three details we can give about our dog? Here we go. The first detail I'd like to give is this one. He was the runt of the litter, the runt of the litter detail two. He is very rambunctious and detail number three, he is a pure bred golden retriever. So again, we just listed three details. Now we are going to use these three details to give a fluent English response. Now, part of the details included some interesting words, some words that maybe you don't know. So let me explain some of those words. All right. Now I'll read the response, the fluent English response. And as we get to the word, I'll tell you the meaning. So here's the response using the three details. You know, my current pet is a golden retriever. He actually was the runt of the litter when I purchased him, but now he is very rambunctious. Now real quick, what is runt? Let's look at this word runt to see what it means. So after me runt, excellent. One more time runt. Good. Now when we say runt in English, we're just referring to an animal that is smaller than average, especially the smallest in a litter, right? When a dog gives birth, they have several puppies, right? But among those puppies, there's one that's really small and really weak in English. We call that puppy a runt. All right. So again, runt. Excellent. Now the dog, the golden retriever was the runt of the litter. But again, we have right here, the word rambunctious. So here we go. Rambunctious after me, the pronunciation can be a little bit tricky. Rambunctious. Excellent. Last time rambunctious. Good job. Now this word rambunctious just means difficult to control or handle wildly boisterous, easily excited, very excited all the time. We call that animal or individual a very rambunctious animal or rambunctious individual. Make sense. All right. Now after me one last time, rambunctious. Excellent. All right. So let's go back now to the response. Once again, I'll start from the beginning. My current pet is a golden retriever. He actually was the runt of the litter when I purchased him, but now he is very rambunctious. I also found out recently that he is a pure bred golden retriever. Now this is the third detail, but what does the word pure bread mean. So after me, pure bread. Excellent. Last time, pure bread. Good job. Now pure bread just means when speaking about an animal right there, bread from parents of the same breed or variety. So 
My dog is a golden retriever. That means its mom was a golden retriever and its dad was a golden retriever. Pure bred. The parents, the mom and the dad were from the same breed. All right. Make sense. All right. After me again, one last time, pure bred. Excellent. So we have again, the last detail being pure bred. But what happened again, we're looking at three details. The first part of this simple rule of threes to speak English fluently. We were able to give this fluent answer using the three details very easily. All right. Now the next one we have again, part of this rule of threes. Remember we had right here three examples. So let's see one that uses the examples. All right, here we go. We have this gorilla. The topic is animals at the zoo. So what is the most interesting animal to see at the zoo? The response, I think gorillas are the most interesting animals to see at the zoo. Now that's the response we're giving. It makes sense. Oh, I think gorillas are the most interesting. But if you stop there, the person listening, the native English speaker will not feel like you are a fluent English speaker. You have to go back to the simple rule of threes and think, wait a minute, let me give three examples to support my idea. So when we go back, we're looking again at the video. First example, they speaking of gorillas, try to interact with people at the windows. That's the first example. Second example, watching their babies cling to their parents as human babies do. And third example, watching them being affectionate with their trainers. So we're giving three examples that support the thought we have that, wow, gorillas are the most interesting. So how can we turn these three examples into a fluent English response? Here we go. Here's the response. One of the most interesting animals at the zoo is a gorilla. When zoo visitors pass by their enclosures, gorillas go to the glass barrier and try to interact with them. Example number one. Another interesting thing about gorillas is how the babies cling to their parents as they walk around. Second example. And third, you can also see gorillas being affectionate with their trainers as they clean their enclosures. All three examples are in our response and that's why it's a fluent English response. Now there are quite a few words in this response that maybe you don't know. So let me explain them very quickly. Now the first word is enclosures. Let's go there real quick. Enclosure. Now real quick, I want to pause for a second because a lot of times you need help with your pronunciation. So I want to remind you to download the app right here. English with Tiffany. The link is right in my description. You can download the app and I actually have pronunciation courses inside of the app. You can download the app for free and start practicing to improve your pronunciation. So hit the link in the description and get English with Tiffany, the app. So now we're back again and we're looking at this word enclosure. I want you to repeat after me enclosure. Excellent. Last time after me enclosure. Excellent. Now this word enclosure just means an area that is sealed off with an artificial or natural barrier. Think about when you go to the zoo, that's not a natural habitat or not a natural area for animals to exist in. So in order for us to enjoy looking at animals at the zoo, they have to make some barriers to protect the animals and to protect us. They make enclosures. Make sense. All right. So again, after me, enclosure. Excellent. Very good. Now the other word we had was interact. All right. So after me interact. Excellent. Last time interact. Very good. Now this word interact just means to communicate with or react to, to communicate with 
or react to. So gorillas, even though they cannot talk, they'll come to the glass barrier and look at people and try to interact with them or communicate with them. And people also try to communicate with the gorillas in English. We say interact. Excellent. Last time interact. Very good. Now the other word we had was right here. We said babies cling to their parents. So I want you to repeat after me cling. Good. Last time cling. Excellent. Now this word cling just means to stick on to or hold something or someone tightly or to refuse to stop holding it, him or her. Think about a baby on a parent's back holding on tight. We say they are clinging to their parents. Makes sense, right? All right. So after me cling, excellent. Very good. Now the last word you'll see the last sentence gorillas being affectionate, a longer word, but I want you to repeat after me. You can do it. Affectionate. Excellent. Last time after me, affectionate. Good job. Now this word affectionate just means showing feelings of liking or love. I remember my nephew when he was a baby, he was maybe about 10 months old. There was a friend of ours at our church and the moment he saw her, he was in love. So whenever she was around, he'd go to hug her and kiss her cheek. He loved her. He liked to be affectionate because he liked her. So maybe you show your affections or you're affectionate with your spouse because you love him or her. All right. So last time after me, affectionate, excellent. Good job. So we have this fluent English response because we used three examples. Now, again, there's one more part to this rule of threes. Remember we had three details, three examples, or three reasons to give a fluent English response. So if we are looking at three reasons, here's the topic service animals. The question being, what is a good example of a service animal? Now your response may be in my opinion, police dogs are a good example of service animals. Now remember that response is fine. It makes sense. However, we want to give a fluent English response, which means we need to give three details, examples, or in this case, three reasons. So, okay. In my opinion, the dogs are very good and they're very helpful. What is my first reason? The first reason is dogs are inherently protective of their owners. Reason number two, dogs have a keen sense of smell. And reason number three, dogs run extremely fast so they can apprehend criminals faster than police on foot. Again, you see that we're giving more support for our response by giving three reasons why we feel that dogs are good service animals. So what will our response look like if we use these three reasons? Here we go. This is our response using the three reasons. You know, in my opinion, police dogs are a good example of service animals. The first reason is that dogs are inherently protective of their owners. Their goal is to protect the cop they have been assigned to, which is very important. Another reason is that dogs have a keen sense of smell. This means that dogs can detect odors that humans cannot. Finally, dogs can run extremely fast. This means that they apprehend and they can apprehend criminals faster than police can on foot. You see what happened, right? It's amazing how the simple rule of threes can help you start sounding like a native English speaker. 
just remembering three details, three examples. And in this example, three reasons. So there are some words that I want to explain to you that are in this example. The first one is inherently after me inherently excellent last time inherently good job. Now this just means in a way that exists as a natural or basic part of something. So for example, I really enjoy drawing and painting. Now this is a natural talent. I have it because of my dad. He used to draw and paint. My sister's also very artistic. So it's inherent, right? A natural ability. All right. We say inherently make sense. All right. Now the other word I want to talk about is right here. We said a keen sense of smell. So after me, keen good last time keen excellent now this word keen just means extreme very strong or well developed so it means dogs they can smell things from far away they have a better sense of smell than even human beings they have a keen or strong sense of smell so again last time after me keen. Very good. Very good. Now what about odor dogs with the keen sense of smell can detect odors. Now after me odor, excellent. Last time after me odor, good job. Now this word odor just means a smell, but it's often mm, unpleasant. Woo. No, no. It does not smell good in English. We say older. All right. Last time after me, older. Good job. Good job. Now in the last sentence, the last two words are on foot. All right. So real quick after me on foot. Excellent. Last time on foot. Good job. Now this just means if you go somewhere on foot, you walk or run rather than using any other form of transport. So instead of driving in your car or taking a bus, you decide to walk using your own feet. You're going on foot. Make sense. All right. Last time after me on foot. Excellent. Very good. So we've seen these examples of the power of this simple rule of threes. If you want to speak English fluently, you must master this simple rule, three details, three examples, or three reasons. And you can start sounding like a native English speaker. Don't forget if you want to practice your pronunciation and get even more exciting English lessons, download the English with Tiffany app today. The link is in the description and you can start learning even more with me. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Remember master this rule and you will start speaking English fluently. I'll see you next week, but as always remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. Sing it with me. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right, guys. So for today's story, you know, at the very beginning of the lesson today, we were talking about pets. We talked about a dog and a golden retriever. Now I used to have a dog and her name was Snickers. Snickers was our dog. I was in high school when we got her. She was cute, very loyal, and she was fun. But I always had in my mind that, you know, dogs, they're man's best friend, but dogs were the best pets. And when someone asked me about having a bird as a pet, I said, birds can't really be good pets because they just stay in their cages. That seems kind of boring. I like the fact that dogs kind of could be taken on walks. They could spend time with you. I liked the idea of a dog, but I had a friend that tried to convince me that birds really are good pets, but 
it didn't really work, the convincing. However, one day a family friend um, had her kids stay with us for a short period of time, about a week for a vacation while she was gone. So her son and her daughter stayed with us and they just happened to have a pet bird. Now their pet bird was named Matt and he was probably about that big, not a big bird, very small. When he came into the house, I just said, oh, okay, he's a bird. He's cute. But I wasn't expecting anything because again, in my mind, Birds just stayed in their cages and they were kind of a little boring. You gave them bird seed and that was it. But Matt was different. So I remember the first day they were with us. My friend, the young boy, he took Matt out of the cage. And I said, okay, I guess Matt is going to sit around because Matt couldn't fly. So Matt started walking on the floor, following us into the room. We were going to watch TV in the living room. So I said, okay, he kind of follows us like a dog does. So we, we sat down and we were watching TV and Matt was just kind of sitting and standing at our feet. I said, oh, that's interesting. The bird is kind of watching TV the next day. Now on the next day that they were with us, my friend, the young boy happened to decide to stay upstairs. I wanted to watch TV and eat something for lunch, eat a snack actually, but my friend, he wanted to stay upstairs. Now he was younger than me. He's more like a younger brother. So I decided to take the bird with me. I said, okay, I'll take Matt and see what he wants to do. So I was walking down the stairs and I realized that Matt was also walking down the stairs. Like, you know, a bird just hopping down the steps. I said, okay, I didn't have to pick him up. So we got down the steps and we rounded the corner to the living room. And I laid out a blanket because I figured maybe, you know, I guess the bird wants to sit on the blanket. So I put the blanket out and I decided to also lay down. I got my snacks and I said, well, maybe, maybe Matt wants some snacks. You see how my mind was starting to change. All of a sudden I was taking care of this bird like it was my dog Snickers. So I got Matt some of his little snacks and I was laying on the ground on top of the blanket and I had my snacks in front of me and I turned the TV on to watch one of my favorite shows. So I gave Matt his snack and I was assuming that he was in his own world, just eating his snacks and being a bird. So I found the show that I was going to watch and I sat, uh, I laid kind of on the ground on top of the blanket and I started eating my snacks and I was watching the show, but then something said, Tiff, look to your right. So I'm looking at the show and I turned to my right and Matt was doing the same thing. I was eating out of my hand, the snacks and Matt with his little beak, kept his eyes on the TV, dipped down, got food and kept watching the TV. We were watching TV together and my mind was blown because I said, this is a bird again, small bird, but I'm getting the same feelings I get when I have my dog Snickers with me. Needless to say, after a week of having Matt stay with us, along with my two friends, I fell in love with birds so much so that to this day, again, almost 20, if not more 20, more than 20 years later, yeah, a lot more than 20 years later, I am thinking about birds still. So one day I plan on getting a bird because of Matt. Matt changed my whole view of birds. Birds can be great pets. They can sit with you, eat snacks with you and watch TV too. Now, maybe you guys had a pet bird or maybe you have a pet bird right now. Let us know in the comment section what your favorite pet is. And if you have a bird, let us know what your experience has been. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll talk to you next week. Have a wonderful day.